Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Jen. Welcome to my home in Charleston. Come on in. Let me show you around. Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles? Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. My name is Jen McDermott, and we are at my home in Charleston, South Carolina. We're about 10 minutes outside of downtown Charleston in an area called West Ashley. So we moved here about two and a half years ago from a little town in New Jersey. We were about 10 minutes outside of Manhattan. After um, COVID, unfortunately, we had a few deaths in the family and my husband had a near death accident and we were also quarantined together for weeks on end. He's in the medical field and so anytime he coughed, he was <laughs> at home on, on leave. So we spent a lot of time together. The kids were quarantined at school in their various colleges. And so we just started armchair traveling and we were obsessed with Zillow. And we thought, you know, if we're gonna move after being here for 28 years, then it better be something that we really, really want. And so we had a very specific list. Um, we of course wanted to be near the ocean, um, only 10 minutes hopefully. We love to hike, so we wanted to be somewhere near you know, um, the hills and, and we just decided everything pointed to Charleston. Um, we needed a vibrant cultural city um, and we love the history of Charleston and we'd never even set foot in the state of South Carolina, ironically. And through a friend of a friend, we, um, met a realtor <clears throat> who had moved here about 10 years ago and um, she never looked back. She was also from Bergen County, New Jersey, where we, where, where we were. And um, we met with her on a weekend in March, uh, flew down here and she took us all around um, the different areas outside of Charleston, in Charleston, and then we drove up on this development. It's literally right on the Ashley River. So in 20 minutes by boat, you can be in Charleston and on the Atlantic Ocean. We are 10 minutes from the beach, 10 minutes from the airport. It's just an unbelievable place. And South Carolina, this low country area is just so charming and um, the weather is fantastic. So we picked from a plan, we picked a lot and, um, and that was kind of it. We've never done anything that's crazy. <laughs> Our friends thought we were a little nuts, um, but we just decided that we wanted a better life and if, um, you know, we can spend the next 50 years here. So architecturally, the house is a, um, a low country farmhouse look from the outside. Inside, we went very classic country English French. Welcome to my living room. So here um, we start out as an, you know, the very open floor plan. It was a bit of a challenge to, you know, put our character and our stamp on it and add architectural interest. So the first thing we did was we added these beams, and even though they look like hand-hewn beams, they're actually veneers. So they're U-shaped beams. They're hollow and very economical. And um, so we were able to add this instant architecture that also really, um, I think delineates the living room. Because it's hard in an open floor plan to sort of create different spaces that have their own character. Um, also by adding this wall of 
drapery in a you know, wonderful soft linen really gives you a nice backdrop to the entire space. And also architecturally, we changed, you know, you're given various options um, in a semi-custom build. You get one paint color, one trim color, one ceiling color, which is very difficult, as you can imagine, for a designer. So um, I just picked this wonderful Sherwin-Williams Elder White. Um, it has a nice depth to it without going too bright gray like a lot of whites do. And we chose, to, after we moved in, to paint the fireplace and all the doors and the spindles on the stairs in black. And that instantly draws attention and depth to the space and gives it some architectural value. You know, if these spindles were white, they would just sort of evaporate. Um, so that was a big thing. Uh, and then design-wise, you know, the house doesn't have very many walls and it didn't have any built-ins. So I found these two Demi Loon cabinets. Um, you know, originally we would love to have built-in uh, bookcases and window seats, but the price would be prohibitive. And in hindsight, I'm so glad we didn't because these cabinets have so much storage in them that I'm able to just hide everything. I don't have to style everything perfectly. And design-wise in here, the goal was really to get a lot of people in this space and to enjoy it at the same time. So I used these two sofas and two different coffee tables. And what joins the colors is, is the thread of the yellow and the blues and the reds and the creams. Um, this sofa had another life. We purchased this Brimfield, Massachusetts antique show, and it was a worn out off-white leather. Um, and it worked perfectly in our other house. But here, it just sort of evaporated. And the feet were bun feet, and they were very, it was very low with this high ceiling. So she got a facelift. Um, this beautiful cranberry linen. We did the contrast piping in the blue. I changed the seat, which was originally a Chesterfield seat with all the tufting. Um, but it was way too fussy, so we just did a simple bench seat and then did these simple buttons across the bottom and some nail heads to just sort of delineate it. And I'm obsessed with fabrics from the UK, these bespoke fabrics that are small production. Um, so a lot of the pillows, I'm able to um, bring in those patterns. So this ottoman actually had nine lives also. Uh, I bought this from my first roommate in Manhattan and took it with me everywhere. Um, it has had a couple of different iterations of fabrics. Here we did this nice chunky vintage African mud cloth. And then I did a, a beautiful tape trim that in the same cranberry with some large buttons at the bottom. And I paired it with this antique uh, 1700s cherry French coffee table. Um, you wouldn't think that it would go together, but um, if you just cleverly mix, mix and match antiques and textiles and texture and scale, they all just sort of work together. Um, this sofa was a bit of a splurge. Um, it is a big space, so we really had to get a big sofa. It was upholstered in this beautiful Susan Delis stripe fabric, and I had them change the direction on here so that it gives it a really interesting custom look and it's super comfortable and I think what makes these two work together also is that they're both fairly traditional um, but they both have bench seats so that kind of gives it a little bit of a consistency. The mantle is not exactly that interesting architecturally. Um, I felt that when I found these lamps at a local antique store I had to have them. They just scream architectural. They're these beautiful swirled Corinthian columns um, and they're very over scale and pairing two of them together I just thought was such a, a fabulous look to add instant architecture. So these are what my husband and I call our Archie Bunker chairs. They are wonderful swivel rockers and um, we sit and read here for hours, watch movies, play games, what have you. I did it in this wonderful bespoke fabric um, to give it that real grounding, that punch of blue that we needed to sort of balance all of these other patterns and, and textures. The first step in mixing various fabrics and patterns is you definitely have to pick something that you love. And um, for me, the hardest part is narrowing down what I love. <laughs> so I keep a common thread throughout. Um, you'll see as we walk through, 
Ochre yellow is a big common thread that'll be seen in a lot of different spaces. And so in here, you know, we've got the reds, the yellows, the blues, and we balance it with the bits of white and also very um, contrasting with the black that really anchors things. So the biggest change moving to South Carolina is the pace. It's, it's a much slower pace, which is, which is great. Um, it's a little something to get used to when you are from the New York City metropolitan area. It gets a little frustrating sometimes, but then you just, you know, you realize you have to back off and, you know, take life a little slower, not so seriously. Um, and the other thing that is, you know, the weather, it is hot. It is hot, hot, hot and humid. And the first year we were here, we embraced it. You know, we just were out in the sun and the beach every day as, as much as we could. But then, um, you know, when you try to get through your day and work and play and house and it just, you know, you're always carrying a water bottle. It's just so hot. And the bugs are insane. They have these things called the noceums, which are, um, they are just pretty violent. <laughs> Okay, now I'll take you over to the dining room. And it's not necessarily a formal dining room by any means. Um, as you know, it's an open floor plan. So in here, I wanted to create a space of its own with its own character. Um, we were lucky enough to bring with us these two head antique chairs and the cherry table. And so we were able to splurge a little bit on this custom eight foot banquette sofa. Um, it's covered in a wonderful Thibaut fabric, so we don't have to worry about stains or bleaching from the window. Because um, I want everybody just to enjoy their meal and it's very comfortable. So in here, we were lucky enough to have a little bit of a wall space to hang something. And um, we collected these antique black Asian trays and paired it with another wood Asian um, sculpture. And just to sort of give the space a little bit of antiquity and some interest and character and the black also matching the black shades and the back of the black chairs gives it that grounding black connective um, color that I've woven through the spaces. We love hosting dinners and um, I have tons of mismatched casual blue and white transfer wear and flow blue plates and other little antique ironstone pieces that I love to mix in. I love to set a big table that has lots of character and color and um, everything that I have I use. I don't think anything is precious and you know if something breaks oh, I'll find another one. It's okay. <laughs> so like in the living room with the large Canton jars that I have I also bring in some more Asian pieces and pottery. Um, this just says you know happiness to me and I love pulling in greenery from the garden, flowers in the summertime from the garden. We have lots of hydrangeas and gardenias. Um, it's just always great to have natural elements in a space. So I fell in love with this beautiful wooden carved Asian shutter. Um, I actually found it on eBay. Um, it has beautiful gilding in it and it just says so much. It has, it's just such a great piece of art. One of the things we loved about this open floor plan was, you know, coming in from the front door, from the big front porch, and then having this direct access to the exterior, to the screen porch. Um, I would describe my style as, um, I guess overall European country. Um, there's a lot of French and English influences throughout. Um, I have a lot of various collections. I love pattern, I love fabrics, I love mixing the colors and the patterns and the and the scale. Um, you would definitely know if you're walking into one of the houses that I've designed or my own home that it's it's always full of character and color. I love decorating my own home. I think it's it's really my showplace and my calling card. Um, and I'm just obsessed with so many different colors and fabrics and textures and creating comfort for, for my family and entertaining. And I just always want to have everything perfect. You know, being a stylist for so many years with the magazines, um, you know, we tweak every little thing all the time. So it's really a little nutty, but um, I don't think I could live in just a white box or um, just a temporary kind of space. It has to really be finished for me and for my family.
to be able to tolerate me. <laughs> Here we are on the screen porch. Um, it is such a great space, we can use it year round. So here we put in, um, of course, the low country day bed that everybody has down here in the south. And you really do live on it. Um, we take naps on it after we've been gardening. Um, we come out here to read and relax. Of course, my husband had to put a TV in so we could watch football and barbecue. Uh, we play lots of lawn games. So it's just a great place to come and relax and get a respite from the heat, humidity, and of course, those bugs. So we're a little obsessed with shells. Um, everywhere we go, from Greece to the Jersey Shore, and of course down here, we are always picking up shells. And some of the shells I just didn't know what to do with, so I started this little project. Um, it's not quite finished yet, but it's a little birdhouse filled with all of the many shells. We just, you know, don't know what to do with them, and we just keep decorating with them, getting a little obsessed. So I created a little area where we could come out and have coffee or drinks or appetizers. And it's a little French bistro table with a marble top. And these are actually original French metal chairs um, from Paris. And um, the artwork is some vintage sea fans that I found and um, framed them in this little shadow box frame with some burlap, kind of bringing you know, a little bit of the art from inside into the space, um, but yet it's durable and seasonable. So this is a really cool piece I found at High Point Market. Um, it's a vintage Asian rice box, but the designer who was selling it put a mirror in it, which I thought was so cool. And he had a huge wall of them, but I found one that I liked and, and found a home for it here. Um, and then of course we mix in a lot of bamboo out here just because it weathers well and it just feels natural. So let me take you out to the back patio. So we created this patio. Uh, we haven't even had a chance to use it this year. Um, I was able to find this black slate super discounted because nobody in Charleston wants black slate in the summertime. <laughs> it's too hot. But for us, it was okay because we have this beautiful 200 year old live oak tree. Um, and the inspiration for creating this space was really just like the Charleston um, downtown courtyard backyards, you know, just very kind of formal. Eventually everything will bloom out. Um, it's filled with hydrangeas and gardenias, um, peonies, azaleas, um, and then of course a very typical Charleston must-have is a water fountain. Unfortunately ours is not running because it's winter, um, but we have a beautiful set of you know teak chairs that will weather very well. These are all from Restoration Hardware and the seating is all very weather I can bleach it, I can power wash it, it's super easy to maintain. Um, and it just feels very cozy back here with this um, brick wall. So one of the wonderful things about our property is that we're tucked in a little cul-de-sac and we are able to get beautiful river views of the Ashley River. And on different parts of the property, you can see more water and little slivers of water. And of course, on the second floor, you can see the river. It's just beautiful. I did always want to be an interior designer. I originally grew up in North Dakota and um, very limited on design inspiration. <laughs> um, and I left when I was 18 because I was just hell bent on going to New York City. And um, I ended up going to FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology, and studied interior design. I nannied my way through college so that I could pay for it all. I didn't know a soul in, in New York City. But I managed to get some pretty great connections through the school um, with some internships. And I ended up working with a very famous interior designer named Matthew Smythe, who I love to death. And, um, and then I got another internship, which led me in a completely different direction. I worked for Country Living Magazine, a Hearst publication, for 15 years. And that really groomed me for interior design as well, because I worked in the home building and architecture department and we would build houses every year all over the United States and it would you know, be 12 to 15 pages of the magazine. And then also I was in charge of 
designing lots of kitchens and bathroom renovations. And so I really gained a lot of experience, um, I think more so than a regular designer would because um, we were the press. So we were sent to the kitchen and bath shows and we would have first peek at um, you know, new appliances, new plumbing fixtures, things like that, and, and decide whether or not we like them enough to then show them and feature them in the magazine. It was a really, really great experience. But after 9-11, I kind of decided that I was tired of the commute to New York City. My kids were babies, and it was just really difficult. And um, I decided to hang my shingle and start my own business. It was very difficult, um, but the best experience. And um, I ended up working on Property Brothers HGTV show. I did three different episodes for them. And that really is what catapulted my career um, and kind of got my name out there. So I was doing a lot of work in the tri-state area in New York and Connecticut. So here we are in the kitchen. Um, this is a much smaller little kitchen than we had back in New Jersey, but I much more prefer it because it's so easy to go from task to task just in this you know, working triangle. Um, and being that it was a little um, smaller, we did have to add some extra cabinetry, which I'll show you later. Um, so again, being a semi-custom home, um, we're kind of given this cabinetry as it is. And so I decided instead of wrapping the monotonous cabinets all the way around, I said, just don't install those, put them in the garage and I'll do something with them later. And when we moved in, we built these um, floating shelves. So we have our cafe ware and, and china all ready to go and grab. Um, the other thing that we did to sort of customize it um, without any expense was on all the white cabinets, we chose a black granite countertop. And on the dark island, we chose the white quartz countertop. So it kind of gives it a custom feel without any kind of an upgraded price. We also changed, once we moved in, lighting fixtures, um, faucets, different hardware, just because it didn't have the character that we wanted, so we wanted to customize it ourselves. And of course, this backsplash is the piece de resistance. It's this Moroccan handmade zellige tile. And what we were given with the plan was the simple white you know, subway tile. And, um, this was another connective color like I was mentioning before. In each space, this ochre yellow makes its presence and sort of then, you know, when you're looking at the space as a whole, um, you've got these connective colors that, that really make it cohesive. So, you know, being an open floor plan, you know, I didn't really want just this utilitarian kitchen. I really wanted it to feel decorated like the rest of the house. So one of the ways to add, um, you know, a bit of country antiquity into the kitchen was I found this vintage um, butcher block table. And it's a nice way to extend the island without taking up too much space. And it's a great place for chopping. All of our collection of cookbooks are here. And um, it was actually rather small. So when we bought it, um, it didn't have these legs on it, but we put these custom wheels to match the maple and um, it brought it up to the proper um, countertop height. This is the cutest little cow. Um, she has been with us for many years, probably 28 years. And um, so we brought her from New Jersey and she found a home right here by the range. So every once in a while, you'll find some rings hanging off of her horns. Um, we, when we're cooking and getting messy, we sometimes just take them off and put them up there and. Hopefully they never drop into the pasta sauce. I added this beautiful piece of artwork um, just to give it, you know, more of a lived in space, um, not so utilitarian, um, and it adds a lot of color. It's um, a beautiful painting of, of pomegranates and it's actually so strange. My dentist, when I was a child back in North Dakota, his son turned out to be a really famous New York City um, artist. And at the time when I was in college, all I could afford was this tiny little painting, but now I think it's, it's quite valuable. So like in a lot of English country kitchens, you see um, individual cabinets um, that house 
China. And not that this is a formal dining room, but we did kind of want a piece that was also a continuation of the kitchen, and we have so much various pottery that we needed more space. So I found this reproduction French glass cabinet. So even though these little reproduction Staffordshire dogs are not um, antique or anything, but they're the cutest little salt and pepper shakers, and I think it goes quite well with all of the various English and Asian pieces that I have going on in here. I love collecting egg cups, and they are just so gorgeous. Um, and you know, you can use them in either direction. Um, I have quite a few of these. Um, I love various gravy boats. Um, this is a flow blue one. And as I said, I love to experiment um, with cooking. And this is actually a tagine. And um, I've made a few different stews in it. It's pretty cool. Um, you have to heat it up quite a bit so that it can make its own kind of convection oven of sorts and it just makes beautiful stews. So in most of the kitchens that I design, one of my signature things is to create a cool pantry door. Um, in our home back in New Jersey, it was a Victorian door that I had painted, a Victorian screen door that I had painted red. Um, this house, being semi-custom, came with just the plain door, which I did paint black, but then my husband and I were like, you know, it's just not special enough. So I found this really cool company online called Rustica. And this is a solid metal door with the fluted glass. And then I put in a fun satin brass um, knurled hardware to kind of mimic the knurling on the faucet. What makes a house come alive is the people and the personality that you um, display. You know, we have a lot of various collections. Everything has a story. Um, I love mixing old and new, and I think that gives it a lot of comfortability for people so that nothing is perfect. You know, you're not afraid to put a glass down on the, on the coffee table because there's already many stains on it. Um, you know, most fabrics are treated these days, so there's no worry that way. Everybody seems to have a dog, so people come with their pets and we all just hang out. It's just, it's, it's the love of the, the family that comes through the personality of the design. So here we are in the mudroom, which I don't even know if we really should be calling it a mudroom. I don't know what to call it because it is so multifunctional. Um, when it was first built, semi-custom again, um, all it came with was this drop zone, which was painted in white. And then over here were just plugs for the washer and dryer. And we really needed a lot more out of this space. So I ended up maxing it out by building in the uh, washer and dryer and using the same absolute black countertop as the kitchen um, to make it flow as, as, as if it were one space. And those missing cabinets from the kitchen I put here to house all the detergents and beach towels. And then of course the drop zone is just great, filled with you know, all the things for the dogs, the beach, um, garden shoes, what have you. And we also needed a bar. Um, so I was able to build these cabinets to look just like the kitchen cabinets and um, we added a wine fridge we added an ice maker so we have a little section over here that's for the bar and then we have a coffee bar over here and i found this piece on king street downtown charleston at a place called e2 it's a european store and like they do in Europe, you know, the, a lot of the kitchens are very um, modular. So this piece, although it is very large, it's a black metal cabinet, but it has all glass sides, so it's not so imposing. So it holds all of our various glassware and, um, you know, some silver that we've collected. One of the quirky fun things in this space is, um, like most of the kitchens I design, I always do some sort of cork board, chalkboard uh, area. And this one has a dual purpose because it cleverly comes right off and covers all of the Wi-Fi and connectivity of the house. So why somebody would put that right in that spot, <laughs> I don't know, but I found a way to cover it up. So I know it's not very typical to put a lamp in a kitchen, but I love that. This was in our kitchen in New Jersey, and I just think it adds a lot of ambiance to the space. And my husband and I joke when the lamp is on, that means it's cocktail hour. <laughs> this artwork collection came from our house in New Jersey. Um, it nods to where we lived off the Hudson River. 
and um, here of course sailing is huge. Um, but what's great about this map, it's an old map from 1776 and it actually is exactly where we lived on the Hudson River before it was all developed. And one of the things that I think is um, a way to make this space classy enough and interesting enough to stand on its own because you are seeing the whole house. You see, when you walk in the front door, you see this room. You don't want it to look like a dirty laundry room or what have you. So that's why everything is very built in and strategically placed and it looks like a continuation of the kitchen. And so another way to jazz it up was to put this wallpaper on the ceiling. So it gives the room a lot of space, a lot of character. This is a beautiful hand-blocked print from the UK. And it kind of looks like tile, which I think is kind of cool. And it has a lot of pattern, just like the rest of the living room and the rest of the house. The thing we love most about this home is the open floor plan. Um, coming from a colonial, Dutch colonial 1930s home, everything's very compartmentalized and the ceilings were very low and everything was very delineated by walls. And here it's just a large open plan. The windows are huge. The light is amazing. There are hardly any walls, so we did have to cut down on a lot of artwork. Um, and there is a challenge of, you know, kind of delineating the spaces with an open floor plan, but it's just great to be in a space that just feels so open and the ceilings are 10 feet high. So it's just, it's just such a great space. So here we are in the primary suite. Um, this we call the wall of shame, <laughs> lovingly. Um, it is all the photos of our relatives, our grandparents, our parents, us as babies, my babies. Um, it's, it also hung in New Jersey, I hate to say it again, but on the stairwell we had lots of walls and I just love having my family around me. What we love about our bedroom is that it's very open and cozy, a little devoid of color, which is unnatural for me, but um, it just has a very calming feel, which is what we, what we all want. Um, it started with this rug. Um, this is an antique rug that I found in High Point again. Um, and it really grounds the space and gives me lots of jumping off points to other fabrics. Um, and it really gives the space a bit of antiquity, which it needs so that it doesn't look brand new. So we always wanted a four poster bed. I just love them. They give you so much architecture and it really brings your eye up to the ceiling and it fills up, fills up the large space. Um, in our old home, the ceilings were eight feet, so it was impossible to, to have this kind of a look. Um, I was lucky enough to find this one on sale. It was originally covered in a gray fabric, but given the price, I knew I could customize it on my own. So we started off with doing the side rails and the end rail in just a simple linen fabric that matches the swivel chairs. And then I customized it with this beautiful Indian flower fabric, another bespoke fabric. Um, on the headboard with some shiny brass nails. And to make this a continuous kind of backdrop, I did the same fabric in the Roman shades. So here I mixed, um, you can see the various different colors and stripes, this beautiful striped fabric from Peter Fasano, um, and mixing it up with a wonderful little paisley and adding a pop of blue with the lamp and otherwise keeping everything else very off-white and creams, creamy colors just to simplify it and make it very soft and feeling. So another way to add some architectural interest and some character to this space is this beautiful beaded chandelier. It's from Visual Comfort. Um, it just really sets the space off and just looks magnificent. It's also pretty gigantic, um, as is the mirror behind me, and also adds a lot of character being this Regency um, carved gilded mirror but I think this is one of the examples of properly playing with scale and pattern. Um, as long as you have you know a few pieces that talk to each other then you're able to get that balance to work together. So I always dreamed about having a huge bedroom that actually was able to 
um, accommodate chairs at the end of the bed. I just love that look. And it actually is really awesome. We sit in the chairs, of course, to put shoes on and things like that, but we also watch TV here. Um, it does house some laundry. Um, but one of the fun things I did here is the chair came with um, the same pillow that matched the linen, but I found this beautiful cruel work from Schumacher and just kind of blew the budget a little bit and had these really huge pillows made for the chairs, which I think make them look really spectacular. And they also speak to the backdrop of all these patterns and fabric colors. So this is our primary bathroom. Um, again, talking about semi-custom homes, uh, a way to make it look more custom. Um, we were in the plan, this was double vanity. Um, we were able to choose the color and the, and the faucets, the plumbing and the hardware. Um, the flooring choices were a little bit limited, so we just kind of went with a simple faux marble look all the way through to the to the shower just to keep it kind of monochromatic. We added these tiles because we really needed some color in the space and um, this beautiful aqua really speaks to the to the bedroom colors as well. Um, and then I added these three um, beautiful Moroccan shaped black iron mirrors um, to give the space some, some character and some wow. And then we added a black glass cabinet to, for the overflow of towels and some of our other collections. Home means love to me. Um, I feel like when I have anybody over and we're entertaining, you know, we're using plates and things that we've collected that have stories to them. We're all laughing, we're telling stories. We're just comfortable. Um, you know, we love to just relax and play games and have drinks and, you know, do outdoor games, especially here in the low country. And it's just, I want everybody to feel comfortable and loved when they come to our home. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.